the fourth piano concerto of Beethoven, um, many pianists' favorite. I think possibly my favorite. And and the thing that I think of about this piece, which is which has tremendous technical difficulties in it, like the first movement especially has a staggering number of like landmines for the pianist, and it shows you what an amazing pianist Beethoven was. But fundamentally, what I think of in the outer movements is is the world of the last movement of Mahler's Fourth Symphony, which is basically children playing in heaven. And a kind of fascinating mixture of innocence and experience, um, using the sort of playful pastoral quality of the classical style and, and infusing in it some other depths and darknesses to the point where it becomes something greater. And one of, one of my favorite musicological details in, in history, and it's not often that musicology can really be something so lovable, but um, there is a page of manuscript sketch page of Beethoven's, where he writes on the first line, which I assume you know, and then on the second line he writes, using the same rhythm, the opening of the fourth. So it's amazing to me, first of all, it's about how important rhythm was to Beethoven, that certain fundamental rhythms were the basis for him to create huge structures out of whole musical thought castles, um, but that also at the same moment he had this incredibly stormy inspiration, the dark, the most kind of angry, angry, restless, storm und drang, as we'd say, peace imaginable, and then at the same moment, the gentlest, most loving theme, maybe the most loving theme he ever wrote, this opening. And so that the two ideas, the two moods came to him in the same bit of inspiration on, on the heels of this rhythm. And the rhythm is a bit stolen too. Um, there's a famous Mozart concerto 503 which has an obsessive treatment of this dum bum 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 it has bum 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 and, and, and in the development bum 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 the piano responds so he's cribbing a bit from Mozart also on this idea and so the, the whole first movement built on this even, even when the piano enters dum bum bum Again, the same rhythm over and over again, chained together. And then it begins to play with and then the orchestra tries to solve everything. I guess that passage for me represents this interplay, well, the use of playfulness and seriousness together and how to create that, that meaningful synthesis. It's something he'd been thinking about since, since early, because Opus 31, before he wrote Opus 31, he says, he writes this letter, he says, I'm looking for a new path. And the first piece he writes after that is, is incredibly playful. This kind of ragtime piece. You know? And then the second piece is incredibly serious. The Tempest Sonata, right? Tragic. And, and the third piece is, you know, also somewhat um, bum, bum, somewhat playful piece but mixed with a little bit of with a little bit of german seriousness so this brew of of wit and the most profound emotion has been has been percolating in him for a while and this piece is the perfect example Thank you. 